Hey what's up you guys, it's your boy Drew here back again with another video for all you American soccer fans out there and in this video, yeah you guessed it, we're going to talk about the CONCACAF Champions League. This video is going to be my preview to the quarterfinal matchups that we have coming tomorrow uh, at the time of this video, the games are tomorrow, but if you're watching this tomorrow, which is the day the games are playing, then hi, how are you future people? <laughs> But of course, before I give you guys my prediction as to what MLS teams I think will make it to the next round, I gotta have a little chat with you guys. Hey, it's your boy Joe here. Do you guys uh, love American soccer? And you wanna see it grow here in America? And do you wanna be part of that growth? And if you do, hit that subscribe button, be part of the change, be part of the Road to 1K, and be part of the Boy Drew squad. Subscribe, hit the like button, comment down below. All right, topic time, let's do it. Okay, so there's a lot, a lot of great matchups left in this CONCACAF Champions League. Things are just heating up, they're spicing up. But the great, the best thing about it that I'm actually really excited for is that every single team left in this competition is playing against an MLS team in the quarterfinal matchup. So every quarterfinal matchup has one MLS team, that's great. We got four MLS teams left in this competition, we got three Liga MX teams, and we got one Panamanian team. That, you know, that Panama team that totally wrecked. Toronto FC earlier this month, <laughs> but anyway, different topic. Uh, let's talk about each individual lineup. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you guys, uh, you know, what I think about that matchup. If I think the MLS team will make it through or not, and some key players as to what I think will be making a difference for the MLS team to make it through or not. So, let's get to it. So the first matchup we've got here for your boy Drew and all you guys out there, all you American soccer fans out there, that's Santos Laguna hosting New York Red Bulls in Mexico. Santos Laguna right now, sixth place in the league, pretty decent, not coming in pretty good form, coming against, uh, coming up against a New York Red Bull team who coming off, who yeah, who is just coming off a one-one draw away at Columbus in the season opener. Great game. Hope you guys watched that. Um, key players for New York Red Bull in this game, of course, going to be obviously, guys, obviously, Bradley Wright Phillips as the main striker, along with his two great wingers, Alex Mule, and of course, Daniel Royer, who scored in both legs. So that's going to be a really, really key fact for them, a good good winger for them to hopefully keep his form in the CONCAP Champions League up. Also, uh, MLS Defender of the, of the Year, Aaron Long, at the back, leading the line, not trying to concede a goal like they did before. Um, I think, you know... With all being said, like you know, Santos Laguna, Santos Laguna is a way different team than um, Pantoja was, which, which is I think the team the New York Red Bulls uh, beat to get to the quarterfinals. Um, Santos Laguna again, like all Liga MX teams should not be taken lightly. They should be like even if they're like last place in New Mexico, like they're still like a Mexican team. They're still a really good team. Should never be underrated. Never be an underdog. Um, but I think anyway, I think New York Red Bulls can defeat Santos Laguna if they played the way they did before and they're in the in the round of 16, when they didn't concede a goal, they won 2-0 away, and then they won 3-0 at home. Perfect. Um, if they can repeat that same kind of intensity, same kind of form, same kind of focus and drive, then they can definitely beat 6th place Santos Laguna from Mexico. I have faith in them. I have faith, so I'm picking New York Red Bulls, MLS team to go through, and the first MLS team to go through to the semifinals. And just like that, let's go right to Houston versus Tigres. Houston, lucky to get the draw to be at home first and then go away at Tigres after in Mexico. Um, Houston, of course, Houston Dynamo, Dynamo coming off a 1-1 season opener against Real Salt Lake. They drew their first game. Not bad, whatever. At least they didn't lose. They're coming in pretty good, decent form. The MLS Open Cup winners. Key players for them, of course, Demarcus Beasley. That guy, I feel, I feel like he's been playing soccer for like years, for like ever. Um, but he's a veteran. He's a great vet. He's really, you know, a good, strong leader for that back line and for the team itself. He did score the the only goal away for Houston Dynamo in their previous games in the CONCACAF Champions League. Another, some other key players for them will obviously be Albert Ellis and also Mauro Man Manotas, who scored two goals in his previous game in the CONCACAF Champions League when Houston won, I think it was 3-0 away. Let me just double check. I lied. It was 2-1 at home win uh, in Houston where Mauro Montes scored two goals against that Guatemala team, which I'm so glad they beat. So glad. <laughs> but still, with all that nice, you know, statistics and, you know, form and drive that this Houston team has, I think they're going to come fall short and lose against... Mexico's number one team in the league right now, Tigres. Um, like Tigres is one of ML uh, one of Liga MX's best teams, so I really would not 
blame Houston for going out at this stage against Tigres because that's like a team you're going to pick to win this competition. Like, I, I can see Tigres and LA United in the final. Dude, that'd be a, a lit final. Anyway, I unfortunately, I think Houston will lose this game. But how a way I think that they can win this, tie and overcome this, just draw and go through the semifinal, is if they really, like, are solid at home. They really don't concede a goal at all. If, if they concede not one goal, perfect. They cannot give up on a away goal. If they can stay solid at home, a score one or even two goals, two goals, like a 2 0 win at home, which should should be like enough motivation and drive to the, to give them that boost, like to go back to Mexico and be like, yo, we can actually win. Let's sit back, let's play strong, let's be let's be aggressive, let's get in their face. Like let's not concede a goal here away from home. A nil nil draw in Mexico would be perfect. Then they could go through to the semifinal and you know really step up a uh, step up the game for MLS against Liga MX. So Houston. Please prove me wrong again. Next up, we got Panama Team Independiente against Sporting Kansas City. Um, this Panama Team was a team that I kind of wrote off when I when I did my other preview video for Concacaf Champions League when I when they went up against uh, Toronto FC, and I was like, you know what? I think Toronto can totally overcome this team. Blah blah blah. They're on Javinko. Who cares? They'll still win. Dude, I was so I could not have been more wrong. They beat Toronto FC at home four nil, and then they went back to Canada. And they got a 1-1 draw. So I was like, okay, so this team ain't, not, ain't no joke, okay? Toronto could not beat this team to save their life. I mean, of course, obviously, when they were played in Toronto, Toronto was kind of like, yeah, we really can't overcome this 4-0 deficit, but whatever. Um, and now they're hosting Sporting Kansas City in Panama for the first leg of this quarterfinal matchup in a CONCACAF Champions League. And if I was Sporting Kansas City and, and like as a team and their fans, I'd be like, you know what? We got to take this game seriously. We saw what they did to Toronto in Panama. We cannot let up. At all, we can't give them any breathing space. We cannot take them lightly. We cannot underwrite them because they're a good team. They've shown they're a good team. We gotta press them to the fullest ability. Boom! Some key players who can do that: Christian Nemeth, Johnny Russell, uh, Graham Zuzzi, and Matt Beasley are gonna be important at the back. And Ely Sanchez, of course, who scored some goals previously for them in this competition. Um, you know, Sporting Kansas City. You know, even though they came off, uh, they're coming off a two-one loss against LAFC. Which was just a last minute, uh, you know, victory for LAFC. So like, it was it was it was gonna end in the tie if it wasn't some for some spectacular Hollywood finish for them. But um, I think, yeah, I'm gonna go with Sporting Kansas City. I have no doubt Kansas City will take this team to back to Panama and leave them there and then go to the semifinal without them. Ready? Let's do it. Sporting Kansas City, my pick. Two MLS teams so far to go through, baby. And the last matchup, which I'm very excited to actually watch and, you know, see how it all plays out. And by the way, if you guys are wondering where you guys can watch the CONCAP Champions League when it airs live, if you're in the USA, you can watch it on Yahoo Sports, which is weird. Watch it on Yahoo Sports. Or if you guys have Univision Deportes, you can also watch it on there. But again, that's only US only. That's what I read in the article. Um, so if you're outside that, I believe there's like Fox Soccer uh, Latin America, which, if you, which is if you're in Central America and Mexico. So you guys can watch it there. I uh, hope, hope I helped you guys out because because uh, if you guys find out where to watch it, obviously I'm going to have a live stream for the final of this CONCACAF Champions League again like I did last year, um, which, uh, you know, some good people showed up. It was fun. We talked. We chatted. We watched the game live together. Um, but we'll save that for, like, when the time comes. Don't worry about it. All right, let's get to it. Let's get to it. LA United away in Monterrey in Mexico. A Monterrey right now is the second in the Mexican League right behind Tigres, so there are no team to... F around with, okay? LA United, of course, you know, coming off, unfortunately, a 2-0 loss away to DC United, which was kind of actually surprising. I actually picked Atlanta to at least get a draw in that um, in that season opener, but whatever. Frank DeBoer's new team, which is kind of scary, you know, his is his new team. He lost his two his first two away games, which was the first one against Herediano, which was a, what, 3-1, 3-1 loss in the CONCACAF Champions League. Then he came back, won 4-0, at home to overturn that deficit, and now he lost 2-0 away again to DC United. <laughs> Excuse me. So it's unfortunate that it's the first matchup right now, again, is Atlanta United away. I hope that really doesn't affect the team as much or their mentality. But obviously, key players for uh, Atlanta United to go forward and get a victory here in Mexico. Obviously, Joseph Martinez up front, uh, Julian Gressel, Darlington Tignagby, Michael Parkhurst, and Brad Guzan. Dude. I have never really been a fan of Brad Guzan. Like, if you guys have watched my channel for a long time, like, you know I really don't rate him. I never rated him. Even before I, had, I was on YouTube and just like just started watching, like I really wasn't a big fan of Brad Guzan. But of course, he had a big mess up this uh, 
like, it wasn't like a big mistake this past uh, season opener for MLS. Like he, the ball bounced and he kind of slipped out of his hand or kind of like he like just missed the way it was going. I watched that replay uh, like a million times and I saw it. I was like, did it really like mess up? Because they said Brad Guzan's slip up caused Atlanta United the victory, whatever. So the guy kicked the ball, it bounced on the floor. And it's, first of all, it's raining. So it's slippery and it slipped. The trajectory changed and it kind of like he was already planted because he thought he knew it was coming, but it didn't and just went the other way. So. I don't really Brad, blame Brad Gozan for that, but he again that that little you know those tabloids and all that talk around him. I hope it doesn't affect his game mentality, and he can still come out in goal with a clean sheet. But then again, that's up to also the defenders like Michael Parkhurst, who's got to keep that back line solid. Don't let this Monterey team attack them. And um, who I think will win this? Um, I'm gonna go ahead on line and say Atlanta United. Okay, Atlanta is our best. MLS team right now. I'm, they're not really showing that they are the best right now, but they did over overturn that three one deficit in the pre in the round of sixteen, and they won four nil at home. Like they really just like they were like they turned the Jets on. Like all right, we're gonna win this game. Like this is our first time in the Concacaf Champions League, mind you. Again, this is their this is their this is their debut into this competition as a whole. This is Monterey's fourth time in its competition, so they've got the history and the experience against Atlanta United. Damn, I can never say Atlanta United really fast. I should just talk really, really slow. <laughs> Sorry. So they've got the experience against Atlanta United. And Atlanta United is this is their like I said, this is their first appearance in the competition. But they've got the players, they've got the quality, they've got the manager to really put all this together and overcome this really, 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 really good Mexican side. And then and if they do overcome this Mexican side, it'll it'll spark like wonders, speak wonders for MLS. And American soccer as a whole. It's like people are going to be saying, you know, are we going to jump to Mexico? Or are we going to, like, is our league really coming up to cl- coming up to the Liga Mexis League? Uh, if like if Atlanta and all these other uh, MLS teams can beat these Mexican sides, then yes, definitely. Because think about it. If all these MLS teams beat their Mexican opposition, there's no Mexican teams left in this competition. Just one uh, Panama team. But if everyone wins, can you imagine if every single MLS team wins? There's just four... MLS teams in the semifinal, and then obviously an American team is going to win it in the final. Dude, that would that would actually be really good for the league and for American soccer as a whole, and that's what we're trying to do here in this channel. So with all that that being said, that's my prediction and my previews for the Concacaf Champions League. Be sure you guys watch these games if you're possible, if you're able to stream it any way you can. I don't care. Support the MLS teams, even if they're not they're, if they're not your team. Support American soccer as a whole against uh, the Mexican and Panama soccer teams. You know, be there for your boys, be there for your country, be there for soccer in America, um, and also be there for me and hit that subscribe button and that like button if you guys like this video. And if I'm totally wrong in all my predictions, uh, don't come back and hate on me because um, I'm not psychic. <laughs> Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'd love to know your thoughts on all these matchups down in the comment section. I want something to read before I go to bed so my thoughts don't get the best of me. <laughs> so, anyway, there, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.